Good evening and welcome to the Online Warriors podcast. Uh, I'm back, uh, Illegal86. You may remember me from a while back. Uh, I missed last week's episode, uh, which was a two-person outing between Nerd Bomber and Tectic One, but I'm happy to say that I've survived my absence. And um, tonight we actually have another two-person episode for you. Um, this time it's going to be a bit of a sausage fest between me and uh, my good friend Tectic One. You can call me the Italian sausage. I will do that. And um, you can call me the Polish sausage. Or Mr. Kilbasa. Please do call me Mr. Kilbasa for this entire episode. Um, so Nerd Bomber sadly is feeling a little bit under the weather. Um, she will be unable to join us. Shout out to Nerd Bomber. Um, next week we should be back at full strength. But for tonight, um, Tectic and I are going to be running down uh, some of the current events uh, that we've been experiencing these past few days. Um, but before we do that, I would love to just shout out um, our excellent Patreon producer, Ben Checkness. Um, as, as you may know at this point, we've been shouting him out for a few episodes. Um, ben is one of our Patreon supporters, and he's supporting us on the night level, which is our highest level of three, um, the other two being uh, the Squire and the Lowly Page. Um, it has come to my attention, um, based mostly on just conscious thought, that for the past however many episodes we've been shouting Ben out, we should probably be referring to him as Sir Ben, because after all, he is a knight. So, so bad. I say... Yeah, shout out to Sir Ben, uh, the first knight of the Royal Order of the Warrior, or something like that. But you got to um, say it with like a like a like an accent if we're going to call him that. Sir Ben, I don't know. That was a weird accent. That was perfect. Um, hello, one of those. Hello, hello, Sir Ben. Um, ben is super cool. Ben probably doesn't do accents like that. He probably does accents much better. Um, and he is super cool for many reasons, but one of those reasons is that he supports us on Patreon. Um, so if you want to be as cool as Ben, then head over to our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash online warriors, and you can see what we have to offer. Um, not only has Ben a producer um, who has some input on some of our some of our segments, namely our game segments every episode, but uh, he also gets access along with uh, the Squire and to a certain extent the Page. Um, he gets access to some of our secret segments and... Uh, um, you know, uh, our vlogs. So, uh, I recently recorded a secret segment, um, which is just an audio segment, but I'm going to be recording my vlog soon. Um, video vlogs, video vlogs. That's right. I forgot that that's what we were calling them. Uh, so I look forward to that. Um, and if you don't have yet have access to that, you should head over to our Patreon and, and check it out. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we have a lot to run through today and, um, why don't we just kick things off with, with a little dose of teleportation? Well, before know? we kick it off, I just want to say all of what the topics we're going to be covering are going to be as follows. We're going to talk a little bit into some teleportation breakthroughs that the scientific community has had. We're going to follow that up with some Area 51 hype and what's going down there. Then we're going to talk about Prime Day, and we're going to cap it off with uh, what you can be excited for with this new Switch Lite. But... Before all that, let's go back to the teleportation and uh, maybe beam me up, Scotty, if I do say so myself. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so essentially, uh, there's a team of researchers in China who have, uh, I guess, found this breakthrough where they have sent a photon. So, I know what you're thinking, which is what I was thinking before I read this article, which is, oh, they just they took like a like a duck or something, like a human, and like beamed him up. But it's no, super we're not quite exciting. exciting. It's super. It, it's not. It's not unexciting, but it's not as exciting as. So just. I don't to, know why I always use duck. Uh, duck as an example, but there's no ducks involved. Just to expand specifically, what they did, they sent one specific, one singular photon particle, 300 miles away to a near orbiting satellite, and they were able to repeat this on some uh, 19 cases. Now, why this is exciting is MIT says that this opens the door for worldwide internet and the way that they accomplished this was on quantum entanglement which if you've heard anything about quantum physics and the theory behind it it's pretty much a bunch of mind fuckery if i do say so myself and pardon my french but it is i mean if you know the schrodinger's cat theory it's cats in a box with some uh deadly radioactive isotopes and they just said well 
if it's closed. I don't know if it's alive or dead, so we're going to call it both. And that's just nuts to me. So, so yeah, the quantum Sorry. theory behind entanglement is they're saying if a particle is here, then it also can be there, which, okay, that I guess I'm going to leave it to the expert to say that that makes sense, but that's how they've done it, and it's been repeatable, which opens the door for a whole bunch of stuff. Now, me personally, what I'm most excited about is the other things that it opens the door for, and that is solar energy. And here's why. So if you think about your sol solar energy and, and things that we have to overcome, well, um, photons are sent from the sun into the atmosphere, past the clouds, and hopefully it's daytime, and then there's efficiency losses within your panel itself. Now, let's throw a solar panel up in space where you've killed a bunch of the barriers, and then you start beaming those photons directly down here, and bam, we just cut out a ton of efficiency losses and potentially solved a huge energy issue in our, in our global problems. So that's where my excitement is. I can really take it or leave it with the internet because I think internet's pretty good as is. But what are your yeah, thoughts? I well, I was going to say, like, to me, faster, faster internet, I mean, I, I don't need it. Like, like, to me, internet is already, like, you know, it's already pretty fast. Like, I, you know, I click a page, it opens. I'm, I'm lucky, I guess, because there's a lot of places all over the world that don't have fast internet or any internet. But for me, any sort of speed gains are not going to be noticed by me at all. Um, so, you know, you could make an argument that, um, the coverage is the more important thing, but I am really just in it for the actual, like taking a body and moving it somewhere, which I know this is a stepping stone towards that. Um, but you know, you make a lot of good points about the energy as well. Um, solving the world's energy problems would obviously be great for a number of reasons, but I just don't want to have to fly anywhere anymore. I hate flying. Well, if you're, if you hate flying why not drive because i it takes too long i, I mean imagine like so I, I live in a different place than my family and i like my family thankfully well then so so the near-term solution to your problem is really autonomous cars if we can fully trust them get in the car go to sleep for the night and bam in the morning you're with your family and that's, that's something you can look forward to at, that's tangible that's the tricky part though is that that's going to be harder to like, I don't know. It's, it's a weird mental thing for me. Like it's going to be harder for me to trust autonomous vehicles ever than for me to like step onto a platform and have my molecules rearranged and put somewhere else. You trust, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You trust something to rip apart your molecules and put them back together, but pff, screw this car driving me. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause someone just says to me, like you just did, they're like quantum entanglement, man. And I'm like, all right, you use the word quantum, beam me up. I'm ready to go. But, I mean, just imagine that, being like, I want to, I feel like going to Las Vegas today. So, yeah, you're right. I think that's a big step for humanity to have instantaneous travel. But the real thing that, and going back to the energy side of it, is I think it puts us one step closer to a Dyson sphere. And if you're wondering, what the heck is a Dyson sphere? Well, I am, so I'm about to Google it. But continue. So what a Dyson sphere is, it's pretty much a superstructure wrapped around the sun and it takes a hundred percent of the sun's energy and utilizes it for the earth or for the civilization surrounding it rather and if we're beaming particles directly from the sun towards us that's one step closer to being a tier three civilization i think we're a tier two and i think the dyson sphere would bring us to a tier three civilization which would make us super advanced as far as alien technology goes how many tiers are there uh, I think there's master. It's like master your own planet's resource, master your sun's resources, and then the the next tier, like tier one is you can't master anything. Tier two is master your planet's resources. Tier three is master your sun's resources, and then I think tier four was master your galaxy's resources. And I, I think, don't know that we've even mastered this planet. Like we'd be skipping ahead. I feel like no, we're like between tier two and three. We're like kind of we're kind of trying to master our planets, but also trying to do that other stuff. Yeah, 
In- incidentally, I found the Wikipedia page for Dyson Sphere and this guy Freeman Dyson, the guy who came up with the Dyson Sphere idea, he's a looker. But not the vacuum uh, cleaner, right? Not the vacuum guy. That guy is actually a looker. This guy, I'm being sarcastic. Shout out to Freeman Dyson. Hopefully he's not a listener because I just insulted him. I'm sure back when he wrote his initial paper about the Dyson Sphere in 1960, he was a much better looking guy than he is now. This picture is from 2005. So, um, Yeah, I mean, the, the energy thing is interesting cause, because, like, I mean, the, the, this experiment actually beamed photons up to a satellite and, like, you know, going by the assumption that photons are basically energy, then, like, if a satellite's falling out of the sky, just send it some photons and then have it knock itself back into its own orbit. Like, I don't know. I, and, and granted, satellites don't really fall out of the sky too often. They're usually pretty set up there. There's already like a billion up there. But like, it certainly uh, begs a lot of questions about where this can take us. Um, I'm into it, but I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, waiting for the big, like, the big teleportation of like actual human beings. Because like, I remember back when, and I don't know when this was. This was multiple years ago at this point. But remember, like the, all the hype that surrounded the Hyperloop. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Pe- people were going crazy about the Hyperloop because it was like, okay, we can get you from like I don't know, like California to, or from like San Francisco to like Las Vegas in like twenty minutes. And everyone's like, hell yeah, I want in on that. And for some reason, I don't know, did it just die? Like so, I haven't heard anything about it. I. And I'm not a I'm not a crazy conspiracy buff, but I truly believe that a lot of our technology is stagnated by big corporations afraid to lose money, and so the hyperloop is 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 something that would impact the fuel industry. The you know even this. Let's talk about fusion, right? Fusion reactors as a renewable energy source, right? That's right. been talked about for years and years and years and can't seem to take off. Well, and, and yeah, going like even the teleportation thing, like what would the airlines do? Well, there was, there's a bunch of companies that if teleportation was invented and actually worked, a bunch of companies would immediately go out of business. Right. Trucking and, companies, airlines, like, like you name it. And granted, like, yeah, forget amazing. people. Let's talk about packages, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Amazon wouldn't have one day shipping anymore. They'd have one second. Sh- I don't even know when it, how fast it would be. They would have but five. Be- they would have five minute shipping, and people would go. Ah, you know, I'm going to get Prime so that I can get one second shipping. This is ridiculous. Well, right, because <laughs> if you think about, and now we're really getting into it, but like, if you think about teleporting a pet, like if you order like a board game of Amazon, they don't even have to put it in a box. They just put it on a pad, send it to your pad. It There's, was. They don't, you, you don't need protective. Like don't you like packing peanuts? The packing peanut industry would suffer, man. It would They'd truly revolutionize people's expectations because think about let's say in the eighteen hundreds, you had to, you would you would have to, you know, drive not even drive it would it would be a trip cross country right. Now it's people right. like oh I'm just I'll just fly and then they're like oh the flight took me four hours that was ridiculous. <laughs> well right and then like you got to get like parking and then there's like. There's planes that are like, be, you know, being bombed and stuff. Like, there's all kinds of stuff that's about with flying that like has nothing to do with the flying that makes it uh, horrible. But like, yeah, I just imagine like even like let's say you walk into a McDonald's and like an let's say this happens in a hundred years. I don't know. What, I'd like for it to happen in a hundred years because I hopefully will still be alive then, thanks to medicine. But like, let's say you walk into a McDonald's in a hundred years, and you're like, I'll have a Big Mac. You know what? Let's say you're sitting on your couch. And you're like, well, no, I let's, want let's, a Big Mac. Let's talk about that. All of your McDonald's, none of the food will be manufactured there. Right. It's, it's going to be at like one big plant that's just sending burgers to your teleport pad. Oh, my God. The possibilities are endless. They, it re- they really are. Um, but I think, I think this is a step towards in our lifetime, we will probably solve the energy crisis. I don't know about the transportation issues. I'm, I'm hard pressed to agree with you there simply because I can't get behind the fact that a photon has no mass and then jumping to sending people who have tons of mass. I mean, I don't know. I I would hope that, you know, 
a bunch of people would lose their jobs, but like the net benefit would still outweigh the net cost. Yeah, but it's not, it's not, technology isn't stagnated because people will lose their jobs, right? It's the, the fat cats that are going to be losing their million dollar income. Fair point. Well, obviously with teleportation, there's, there's a lot of ins and outs, but uh, for now, suffice to say, we're moving light particles around. <laughs> so um, at the very least, we can, uh, we can up the amount of internet coverage in the world, because we were talking about this before, and it actually, the amount of internet users, like the percentage of the world that uses the internet is actually much lower than you would think. Um, in the developed world, it's around 80%, but in the world as a whole, it's not even 50%. So like, if you want to talk about like quantum internet and like what it could do, that would be a big step. We'll definitely be united globally if, if, if we do take this step. And that is very exciting. But what I'm curious about, uh, Illegal, is is there any way that we can expedite this technology? How, how can we make it move faster? Uh, see how the aliens did it. How, how do you think we can maybe get a hold of this alien technology I'll tell if, you if they do. have done it? I'll tell you what we can do, my friend. We can go ahead and bust into Area 51. Uh, so what I'm referring to, of course, is the Internet phenomenon that has taken the world by storm uh, in the past, I don't know, five, four or five days, I think, is when it started. Um, so essentially, here's the gist if you haven't heard about it. There's a billion memes about it, so I'd be surprised if you haven't heard about it. But um, essentially, within the last week, someone created a Facebook event titled storm area 51 they can't stop all of us um basically the creators explained we will all meet up at the area 51 alien center tourist attraction and coordinate our entry if we naruto run we can move faster than their bullets let's see them aliens which there's a lot to unpack there um i did not initially know what a naruto run was oh come on you gotta watch the show it's fantastic essentially it amounts to you 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 take your hands and your arms and you hold them behind you and you like lean forward it looks like you're running head first like if you were if you naruto ran at a brick wall the first thing to hit would be your forehead that's like that's That's an accurate depiction yeah um it does not allow you to run faster than bullets i don't think um so this event is actually planned it's actually set for the 20th of september in the wee hours and as of this recording, 1.4 million people have RSVP'd as attending the raid, while 1.1 million more are interested. So, like, supposedly, there is apparently a, a, a chance that on December 20th, 1.5 million people or something are going to be trying to, do, are just going to be running at Area 51. And here's which the like, other side of it. Yeah. The, supposedly, the big guns are also saying they're in, i.e., Chuck Norris, Keanu Reeves, a.k.a. Famous people. Famous people. The Rock. Spider-Man will be there. Thor will be there. So if you head on over to Area 51 on September 20th, you might be standing next to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Well, Air Force guards shoot at you. Or, like, dude, this is never going to work. But, like... I think it's crazy. So, like, there's a lot of evidence right now to suggest that, like, like there, there are hotels in the area that are reporting that they've been booked solid and people that are making reservations are referencing this Facebook event um, as they make these reservations. So, like, it seems like there are some people that are very serious about this, which my response to that is, wow, there's a lot that you don't understand about, like, I don't know. First of all, the weapons that the government could use to... So, keep you from storming the gates, the crowd control methods. I don't but think like, I don't think anyone is actually hopefully planning to storm the gates. I think it's gonna be the first kind of Woodstock event where everyone's gonna meet up in the desert, they're all gonna be wearing their UFO gear, and they're just gonna have a party. I think it's just gonna be get drunk in the desert and joke around about doing this. It's just gonna be a uh, a group hang. Yeah, like squad a, goals. Yeah, and and actually, it's funny you say that because uh, one of the tweets in this article that this article references is uh, 
says Area 51 is just Coachella for conspiracy theorists. So you're saying that they're going more for that vibe. Oh, like absolutely. a fire fest kind of. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope that's true. Because if there are people who seriously want to do this, they're going to be disappointed. But I do, I do want to give my public service announcement, right? This is going to be potentially a huge conglomerate of people grouped up in one place. So just be careful, be safe. If someone is taking it seriously and does bring weapons or, or anything like that, you know, right. I, anytime, anytime a, a gun is brought to a party, right? It never ends well. And so just please be wary. <laughs> it's, yeah. These, these kind of events get me nervous. Well, and I would imagine that, oh, man, probably out of the 1.4 million, 1.399 are like kind of like what you're saying like where they're just going to go and have a good time and then there's probably like ten thousand people who are like we're getting in there man like i'll, I'll bring my my gun and s- just start spraying which like obviously don't do that horrible idea uh here at online warriors we do not uh obviously we do not recommend that kind of behavior um but i do want to ask you uh uh, let's say that Nerd Bomber and I approached you and we're like, hey man, what are you doing September 20th? Let's go to Area 51 and like try and get it and see the see the spacemen. Would you be like, would you be down to, like, to do that? I would be down, but I would stay as far back from the actual gate as possible, one. And then I'd also propose an alternative event to you guys that maybe you guys would be down for. Here's what I would oh. propose. I'd okay. say, hey guys, Let's storm the entrance gates at Disney World. They can't. They can't flag us all. And then, okay, no, okay, no one is going to be gunning you down with military force. They're just going to go. I don't get paid enough for this crap. And then you're in the park, and you didn't pay a hundred plus dollars for admission, and you get to spend time in Disney World. Yeah. See, this is legitimately a brilliant idea. But like, it, I think if. Because half the problem with this, like, the Area 51, all right, first of all, you got armed guards sitting out front of it. At Disney, what do you have? Some kid punching tickets who's going to see a mass of a million people and say, I don't get paid enough for this. So, like, right there, you're in. And then after you get in, what are they going to do? And let's say, let's say that because it's an event, they, they call the police in advance I don't know if, if, if we're not showing aggression, if we're just trying to push forward, I don't know that what there's can, really violent force that would be necessary. Well, I'm sure there's something they could do. I guess technically you're trespassing. I don't know. Maybe don't storm anything, folks. There's Maybe risk don't storm everywhere. Anything. But if you're going to storm something, don't storm. I mean, Area 51. So, like, the thing about Area 51 is that, like I said, there's the armed guards. There's a, there's a gate, the front gate. And I was reading today, if you get through the front gate, let's say that these 1.4 million people push down the front gate and they're like in, guess what's next? They're, they're not at any building. There's five miles or something of desert between the front gates and like where the aliens supposedly are. So like, then you got to walk five miles or like, even if you have like ATVs or like even a car or anything, it's five miles. They're going to be they're They're going to have defenses. There's signs up that say that they're allowed to shoot on site. So like, you're pretty much screwed. Yeah, it's the, it's a military designed defense. Yeah, they know people want to see what's in there. I mean, Disney's your better bet for sure. Or Universal, but, right? We're not we're not trying to pick and choose here. Sh- sure, Harry Potter World, but like if, if you're, I think if you made the Facebook event, you could put you could probably get like you could probably get sued or something. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, so maybe one of the listeners want to make the Facebook. I'll I'll gladly come, but I'll just be a number at that point. So, well, yeah. Shout out to all the listeners. Like, first of all, if you're if you're planning on going to Area Fifty One, drop us drop us a comment because like I just want to know who these one point four million people are, and like just tell us where if you're going, why you're going, if you're actually seriously planning on going and trying to get in. Did you party what, with Keanu? Did you probably count it like just what the dealio is? Um, I think we should also start like a GoFundMe for like if people want us to go and check it out and like report back, we'll go. But like, I just I it's I can't imagine 
being in a situation like life wise and like financially where I just be like, I'm going to take off work and go and go book a hotel and like, just go to Nevada and see what happens. I'll, I'll bet you there will be news coverage. So like, that's their job. They'll get to book a hotel and see what happens. See, I don't, like, I don't know. I, part of me thinks that in, on September, but I mean, it's what July, what are the days today? July 16th or something tomorrow, like a week from now. We're not going to be talking about this anymore. Yeah, there's a lot of memes and they're all great, but like it will have died down. And by September, no one's going to remember this. I disagree with you. What with the what you had stated about the hotel bookings and that, I think people will turn up. I don't think it's going to be the 1.5 million people. I think it's going to be probably 50,000. I think that's a fair. Uh, I don't even think it's going to be that much. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We should we should bet on this. We should sure. do like an over. We get like an over under. Like over. What, let's set the over under at twenty five thousand, and I will absolutely take the under. Okay, I'm gonna take the over, for sure. Okay, uh, the stakes are gonna be an all expenses paid trip to Area Fifty One. <laughs> loser um, has to go, or winner has to go. The loser has to pay for the winner to go. But it would be after the event occurred. It'll be at the next next year because, like you said, it's gonna turn into an annual event. Oh, that's right. It's going to be 51 Ella, let's call it. Yeah. Or like, well, there's Bonnaroo, so like Area 51 Aru. Or like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with Woodstock, but like 51 Stock. Jam in the Desert. 51 Fest. And there's a lot we could do. Uh, all the, I mean, really, all they have to do is like get in touch with like one of those music producer guys who like makes these festivals. And they have a legitimate event on their hands. You got the alien theming. You're pretty much good to go. So uh, feel free to steal that idea from us. Um, but yeah, if you're going to Area 51, let us know how it, how it goes. Because <laughs> I'm legitimately curious at this point. But I think it's going down for sure. But with that, we're going to talk a little bit about PodCoin. Po- if you don't know, PodCoin is a podcast app where you get rewards for listening to your favorite podcast. And the way it works is for however long you listen to each podcast, you get a certain amount of points, and those points can go towards things like Amazon gift card and other prizes. And if you use our promo code Online Warriors, you get a bonus 300 points to get started. So check out PodCoin and start collecting your points. Believe me when I say you're going to want those 300 coins. Um, and you actually... so. You just kind of segued us into our next topic by mentioning Amazon gift cards, um, which is Prime Day. So uh, as we record this, uh, we're recording this on a Tuesday night. So as as of this recording, uh, Prime Day is still going on, but it's pretty much wrapped up. Um, by the time this episode airs, it will have ended. But um, I, I figured we should just kind of debrief on this whole thing. Um, I will say... Uh, in the two, so it's it's a two day event, so Monday and Tuesday. Um, I've been looking at it every day, checking the sales, looking at things. I have not bought anything, and um, there have been plenty of things I've wanted to buy. Uh, I almost bought a Ring doorbell. I almost bought a Roomba. Thought about buying a TV, um, but they're all, believe it or not, you still have to pay money. So I and I don't have money, so I figured I wouldn't do it. But I will say some of these deals are are pretty outrageous. So I did buy some things. Um, I am also kind of the person where if just because I see a sale doesn't mean I have to spend money because the best sale is spending no money at all. But I took this as an opportunity to do my Christmas shopping. And since my mom and dad don't listen to the podcast, I know, come on, mom and dad. uh, Shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Tectic. I will say I got them two of the Amazon Show 5s. One, well, one for each of them. Um, and regularly $80, it was $40, which that is be, that being just coming out, um, that's a fantastic deal for that because by the time Christmas comes around, it's not going to be for that price. And you can kind of guesstimate that that will happen because it just got unveiled. Um, so my point to this statement is if you are going to shop on Amazon Prime Day, to get gifts for Christmas, 
just be weary of, you know, how some technology might depreciate from now until December and um, if it truly is a value or if, you know, it'd be cheaper to wait for something like Black Friday or that or Cyber well, right, Monday. Be, be, because there's a lot of people and I, I, I've seen, I mean, the machine they have churning here is just unbelievable. But like I saw, I was scrolling in on like Facebook and I saw someone write like, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you don't need to buy that thing on Amazon Prime Day. And I was like, I didn't really need to hear that, but I was like, someone needed to hear it. Because, like, there are people, like you said, like you said, the best sale is just not paying any money at all, which is true. But there are a lot of people who are probably seeing these deals, and they don't need anything, but they're just scrolling the deals, looking for a good deal and being like, I don't want to lose money on this. And, like, it's it's crazy what they've done now. Like, they have, like, when you go to the deals page, they have, first of all, like, literally thousands of deals and they're all they got these lightning deals that are timed out at a certain time you have to make sure you get here at this point to get it they have crazy deals they're giving the deco dots away i don't know even like oh yeah everything comes with a free echo dot doesn't matter what you buy it's like toilet paper echo dot yeah they're just throwing echo dots at you which like i don't need an echo dot like i already i have two echo dots and a pretty small house so like if i am at one end of my house and i call my alexa she'll hear me on the other side of the house and like say what's up so like if anything amazon's screwing up because their microphones are so good and they can hear everything i'm saying at all times that's another conversation but yeah so i mean i haven't bought anything but like they have like when you go to this deals page they have like people on like a tv show that it's like a qvc looking show that are explaining the deals to you and explaining why the product is great and like it's just it's a crazy setup so like i I don't know i haven't bought anything i've been tempted um but like you mentioned with like Black Friday, like, one of the things I've been wanting to buy for a long time is a TV. But I have to say, the TV deals on Prime Day are not that great, and I think on Black Friday they're going to be better. So I'm waiting on that. Um, so, so if you guys are interested in some of the deals, but you aren't subscribed to Amazon Prime, and you would like to cheat the system, which, right, we're all looking to save a buck out there, right? It oh, is, yeah. It is tough out there. What I recommend doing is making a trial membership, buying what you need to buy, scrapping that account, make sure to end your membership or they will keep charging you. That's that's really what they're hoping is that people forget to cancel their membership because that's, I mean, right, the membership's where they make their money. I would assume so. I, otherwise, I don't know how they're making money. I, I mean, the, yeah. So then cancel your membership and then just make a new account next year and rinse and repeat or... The, the way that I did it um, was have a friend who has Prime. So Nerd Bomber has Prime. I don't have Prime. And my original plan was to buy an Amazon gift card and email it to her for the exact amount that my purchase was and have her purchase everything on her Prime account. And they had a 24-hour hold on all um, gift cards, which kind of foiled my plan, but... I just canceled the gift card and then venmo because it's the 21st century. Me, You can't stop me. So that's, <laughs> that is, that is one way to do it. Um, if you don't have a prime account or don't want to set up a trial account and this way, your friend doesn't have to be out any of the money. I can't believe the trial account thing. I can't believe they give you trial accounts and let you just use them right away. Yeah. Like, that kind of, it, 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 it kind of devalues the, the whole reason why you have the Prime membership, aside from free shipping, right? It makes them go, oh, pff, these bums don't actually pay. Cause, yeah, because you do forget that it's the deals are supposed to be only for Prime members. But, like, there's probably a lot of people that just get, like you said, get the trial membership, buy some stuff, cancel the trial membership, never pay for the membership. Like, they're really banking hard on people being lazy and forgetting to cancel. And you know what? It probably still works. Um, I don't know. Like... I, Amazon's tough because, like, I obviously I love Amazon. Um, I order stuff there all the time. They have the one. I, they have the one day shipping now. Prices are always low. Um, but I just recently watched a John Oliver last week tonight about their warehouse system and how messed up it is and how overworked the people are. Um, the the bottom line is Amazon has like their prices are lower. They could do one day shipping. They have to be cutting their costs somewhere to make that happen and to keep their prices low. And they're cutting the costs in like working their people to the bone, I would assume. Not to get all like public service announcement y, 
But um, I guess if you're thinking about ordering something from Amazon, it's something that you should probably think about every once in a while and maybe toss some money to the old brick and mortars, um, which unfortunately are going the way of the dodo. But hopefully that uh, the pace of their doing so will slow a little bit. Um, I mean, just wait till Amazon Prime starts... Uh teleporting their their goods and services oh my god i mean no yeah no one will be able to compete at that point i mean jeff bezos is so rich the first teleporter comes out he can just buy it and have it for himself and then they're the only ones that can teleport and they'll rule the world yeah but i feel like the rich people just teleport weird stuff at first like rolls royces no i mean i mean like weird stuff I'm not even going to say what. I'm just going to let everyone's imagination venture to what this weird stuff could be. Okay, I have a picture in my mind, and it is definitely very weird. Um, So, yeah, uh, as we mentioned, Prime Day will be over (laughs) by the time this episode airs. But um, if you bought something on Prime Day, and if you're you're thrilled about it, uh, let us know in the comments. I, I was so close to buying a Roomba. I mean, Roombas are the best. I don't have one. You guys have one. I know that. Um, we should start a poll. If you bought something on Amazon Prime, let us know if it was something you needed or wanted. Ooh, that's a good poll. We should we should act, we'll like set up the actual Twitter poll so you could just like click a button instead of typing stuff. For my own um, justification, Christmas gifts for others is a need. Oh right, yeah. I mean, you're it's 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 really a selfless thing that you're doing. But there, I'm, I'm saying that there's people that are just like. Because you can just get out and scroll the deals and be like, "Huh, I could my, my life could benefit from owning that thing, even if it really couldn't." Like there are people, and I've, I'm guilty of this too. You log on to Amazon looking to buy something and you don't even know what. And what, what else was interesting too? I don't know if you noticed, but on Prime Day, other sh- stores had like doorbuster deals on their online yeah. websites. Target was a big compete. one that I noticed. That was I, the, yeah. Competing I know for. Walmart. I didn't look at Target, but I know Walmart had some. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's turning into an event that's rivaled by like Black Friday. And I know like uh, around the Super Bowl TV sales are pretty, pretty decent too. But, um, yeah, it's clearly, uh, a part of our culture now for better or for worse. Um, I will say that they didn't really have any, cause I was kind of on the lookout for this, not that I'm looking to buy one, but there weren't really any switch deals and, and switches are still really expensive. Um, yeah, I, I kind of hoped that they made some kind of a cheaper Switch. Hmm. And with that in mind, let's talk about the Switch Lite. So Nintendo has announced the Nintendo Switch Lite. Um, it'll be launching on September 20th of 2019, ironically the same day as the Area 51 thing. So maybe there's a conspiracy there. I don't know. Uh, there is. Yeah. MSRP, $200. Uh and essentially, if you haven't seen this yet, I'll break it down for you here. It's a PSP, and, I, and I'm I'm not saying that as though it's a bad thing, but if you look, PSP at it, was the most amazing handheld device and the most underrated handheld device as well. That thing could not agree more. That thing changed me from a boy to a man. I loved my PSP. I don't have it anymore. I sold it, uh, but. I, like, I had a DS, and, like, the DS, like, I'm happy to see... The, so, essentially, the Switch Lite is basically going to be a handheld console only. There's no TV connectability. It's not even tabletop play. The Joy-Cons aren't disconnectable. It's all, it's basically just a handheld console that looks like a Switch and acts like a Switch, and you can play all the games the Switch has. Um, at first, I was kind of uh, bearish on this idea, but I've since been turned around. Um, Yo. Simply, simply because, like, the, the DS... I had a DS, and like I think the DS is a, is one big gimmick. It's, I hate t- I hate the stencil, and really to have a handheld Nintendo system that doesn't require a stencil is my favorite. Right, like like, like I had a Game Boy, I had a Game Boy Color, I had a Game Boy Advance, I had the SP, all the way up to the DS, and then when I got the DS, it was okay. It was like, like I, they they have great games. That is one thing I will say about Nintendo. They consistently have great games. Their franchises are amazing. Um, the DS, though, like, I, I was never really on board with the two-screen thing or the touch-screen thing. I just wasn't really for it, um, which is why I then got a PSP. It kind of defected. Um, if you look at a Switch Lite, the first thing you think is PSP. And, I'm again, I'm saying that 
that's a good thing. Um, but I don't know. Like, I'm curious to see how this does. So um, a cu- couple of things that I think are it's going to do. One, I think it's going to bring people who were on the fence on getting the Switch because of the price tag. They're gonna they're gonna get into Nintendo, and then that might open the door for either a them to get a full born Switch system, or b I bet you that a adapter will come out that will allow you to connect it to your television. It might not be the same nice docking station. It might be just like a plug in piece, but I bet you that will follow. And It'd then be a, certainly be a good cash grab. And then also. The other thing that would need to follow that was some kind of firmware update that allows for additional use of nunchucks to go to that one. Because I believe the nunchucks that come on that switch are just solid mounted to it. They don't remove or anything. I don't think so. It doesn't really say, but it doesn't look like they do. But all in all, I think it offers them the opportunity to either A, get the full console, or B, buy all of the swag that will be necessary to upgrade this to this full console which really is a is a is a great marketing ploy right because it's either pay three hundred dollars now or pay three hundred dollars later at the end of the day nintendo's get you getting your money yeah i mean i will say like not that i've been seriously considering getting a switch at any point but like this is one of the better handheld consoles I've seen come out in the past few years, and, and the $200 price point is certainly easier to swallow than the $300 price point of the, of the full system. So I could definitely be convinced here. Um, I would need to look more at the games, what games they have, and, and which ones would appeal to me. But I'm, in, I'm at the very least intrigued. Um, so if you're interested uh, in, in the Nintendo Switch Lite, I encourage you to check it out, but the pre-order is not yet available. You can't pre-order yet, but it will be released. It's launching on, again, September 20th, so pre-order should be going live soon. So Uh, downside to going to Area 51 is you won't be home to get your Switch. Yeah. You know, maybe they'll they'll set up a booth at the Area 51, and they'll they'll just, like, hand them out. Pay, pay, Pay $200, here's your Switch. You can play it while you're sitting around waiting for the aliens. Um, you heard it here first, Nintendo. Yeah, it's a pretty good marketing idea. Feel free to steal it, uh, but we would like credit. So, um, yeah, that pretty much that wraps up our news um, for the week. But we have some what are you up toing to do, and um, I'll let you take it away to start. Okay, sure. So every year around this time, Nerd Bomber and I throw a summer bash. And uh, Illegal was invited, but unfortunately, he couldn't make it. Um, I'm bitter. So we've bitter at myself. I'm not bitter at you. I'm bitter at myself for not being able to make it. Anyways, go ahead. We've been preparing for said bash, which it's not this weekend, but it's coming up shortly thereafter. Um, And two favorite things that I'm most excited for. The first one, I love hanging my Edison light bulbs up around the yard. If you don't know what Edison light bulbs are, and they're these, they're these little classy kind of old style looking light bulbs on a string like Christmas lights. And they just hang and they do this real low glow, but also light up the place nicely. So it's and like a vintage, vintage bulb kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, kind of like a vintage bulb. You generally see them at like outdoor bars and things like that. Um, that's kind of the look I'm going for. I want to say, hey guys, you're in a neighborhood, but you're oh, kind yeah. of in a bar. I just Googled these. So so you're essentially, you're going for a, like, you're trying to turn your backyard barbecue into, like, a like a beer commercial, like a Heineken commercial or something. Yeah, I'm, as the kids say, classy AF. So would it be, or like, g- give me give me the vibe here in terms of, like, beer brand. Are you going for a Bud Light commercial or a Coors Light commercial or a Heineken commercial? Or, like, a Stella Artois commercial if you're feeling really, really classy. Bud Light, Heineken... I guess it would be a Bud Light commercial. Okay. All all American, not trying too hard, but still looking good. Although Bud Light's all about the Rockies, and no, there will be no Rockies. No, that's Coors. Or... Coors Light's all about. That's the Rockies. Coors. Okay, then Bud yeah. Light. Bud Light um, is just like we're just a beer here. Drink us. That's Reasonable. that's that's kind of my speed. But the other thing that I'm really excited about is I will be making my jug of my ties. 
And oh my goodness! And the key uh, in my mai tais is I do not measure at all when I mix the ingredients together. So if you got a pen and paper ready, you might want to write this down, folks. You're giving out your mai tai formula to just to everybody. It's important to share with the public. They need to wow. know. That's bold, man. Go ahead. So first ingredient: bottom shelf rum. As bottom, and it has to be a handle. Bottom shelf handle of rum. The lower the shelf, the better, really. Because we're about to put a smack ton of citrus in there anyway, so why spend the money? Okay. Okay, then... With you so far. You get your standard container of Tropicana orange juice. The big one, not the little one that you get with your breakfast. Then you get that 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 weird can of pineapple juice, the one you got to poke the holes in the lid to get it all out. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I actually don't. I'm not a big pineapple juice guy, though, so I, I feel like this isn't for me. Okay. I thought you were talking pitch, about mojitos. And picture, a, picture a soup can and then make it giant. Okay, I'm there. Okay. You get that can of pineapple juice. Then you get a bottle of grenadine and then just throw them all in your jug. Don't measure. It's the entire bottle of everything. Wow. So you're just, just hope you've all your, so you, you say that the, containers have the right proportions that you just mix them all together so you make sure you get the right sizes people otherwise that's that's important and you get a sweet tasting pink drink that is dangerously smooth and dyes everyone's mouth kind of orange or kind of pink and is this like a is there is there any garnish situation or is it just you get it out the jug and go to town so last year I just did the jug, but I was thinking of having a container of maraschino cherries just to add more red to it because I really find it hilarious how red people's mouths get. So, so until it's funny until you mentioned the granite, the pineapple juice and the grenadine, I was like, okay, so we're talking about mojitos here. Mojitos are the ones that are like minty, right? Yeah, they they sound similar to me, but yours sound better because I'm a big grenadine guy. I'm just a general tropical fruit. Drink, guy. I'm so sad I'm not going to be there. Oh, yeah. Just stop on by. Oh, wait. You suck. <coughs> Excuse me. You um, suck. Well, I will see what I can do, but I'm like half a continent away. Uh, I'm like, my timing of traveling home is like a week wrong, unfortunately. But um, speaking of my ties, and speaking of drinking, uh, I, as I mentioned before, just got back from like a week between like a week and a week and a half vacation um i will tell you where i went because that doesn't really tell you where i am um, which is very important like personal sensitive information but uh the vacation was in the outer banks north carolina uh which is like this thin sliver of land off the coast uh of the and right on the atlantic ocean and you essentially you go out there if you're us at least you go out there uh you rent like a coastal like a beach house situation and like y'all sit around, go to the beach. Uh, I did a lot of day drinking, a lot of like Corona's and like land shark situations. Um, you know, you go in the water, you get sunburn, you read, you get more sunburn, you go back in the water, spray on sunscreen. that doesn't work. Um, played a lot of games, watch a lot of movies. Uh, I do want to shout out specifically, uh, one of our friend podcasts, uh, cages kiss. Uh, is a podcast that is named both for the actor Nicolas Cage and for one of his films, Vampire's Kiss, which is, I think, came out in 1988. Is it good? It is. Oh, my God. Um, you should check it out. It's it's like the most Nicolas Cage movie of all time. Like, he just goes all out. He makes a lot of choices that are bold that probably no other actor would make. Um, it's not unentertaining, I'll say that much. Um yeah, I'd say it was good. It was good for the wrong reasons. Let me put it that way. Um, so that's like that's my movie recommendation. Was it one of those you sit back and go, "What the hell am I watching?" Oh yeah, pretty much the entire time. the The entire time I was wondering, and I, I mentioned I wrote a review of this movie um, on my blog Tuesdays with Corey. Shout out to Tuesdays with Corey. Um, and I, the main thought, as I said in my review, what was going through my head pretty much most of the time was, "How did this get past?" How did this get even get to the Hollywood executives to approve it? You would think someone would read it and go, obviously this movie is not going to get made, and like throw it in the, right in the trash. But that didn't happen with this movie. And they made it, and I'm glad they did, because it gave us... It's it's like, it's the movie, like, name a Nicolas Cage meme that you've seen. It was in this movie. 
Like, you really? know that face? Yeah, you know that face he makes where he has the big eyes? Yeah. Yeah, it's from this movie. I have like, to watch it. And the alphabet scene, if you've seen that, that's also from this movie. There's, a, there's, yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, he basically, I mean, it's called Vampire's Kiss. He thinks that he's turning into a vampire. That's the premise of the movie. And he's and, not. Well, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, you should just, you should just see the movie for yourself. So that's one thing that happened um, on that vacation. But I, I do want to also. Uh, give a recommendation because we play a lot of games uh, there's a big group of us and we play a lot of games like uh, Secret Hitler code names if you know those kind of games a lot of social deduction games and there is a new game I played this time that I would like to shout out specifically it's called Deception Murder in Hong Kong um, essentially um, there's a whole group of you that one of you is a murderer and you're trying to figure out who the murderer is based on um, the murder weapons and the evidence they have in front of them um, so it's kind of, it's like I said, it's like a mix of code names and secret Hitler, um, a lot of deception going on. That's the name of the game after all. So I'd recommend that. Um, since getting back, which was, you know, just like a couple days ago, the only thing I really have to report right now is that I'm going through stranger things season three. Um, but I'm only two episodes in, so I don't have a whole lot to say about it yet. Other than that, the kids have very clearly hit puberty. Uh, Take from that what you will. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll do a quick rundown before we get into our game of the Fantasy Movie League, um, which I'd encourage anyone to join it. Uh, this season is ongoing. There's four weeks left. It ends in uh, on August 9th. Um, but you can get in on the next season if you want. Get on the ground floor. Make sure you're staying competitive with us. Uh, I have not been competitive at all. I think I missed the last two weeks. Keep forgetting, man. My line. I keep forgetting, and that when you forget, you obviously you can't win. That's like the whole point. Um, as far as winning goes, Nerd Bomber is still in front. Shout out to Nerd Bomber. Um, she's, and I believe she forgot a week this season. We're all forgetting weeks, apparently. She she has won four weeks out of I think like the six that have happened. So she's doing very well for herself. She has five hundred million dollars in the bank. She's followed closely by Devin Reed, who is at 491. Uh, he also has one win on the season. Um, coming in at third place is our very own Tactic One. Um, Just wait. I'm going to have my breakout week. Only 11 million behind. He's at, yeah, he's at 479 right now. Um, he has no uh, wins, but he's very consistent. Got to give him credit. Um, in fourth place is, is Spitfire 32 at 409, so that's a pretty big gap. You have a pretty good cushion. And then even further down... At fifth place is yours truly. I did win one week on the season. Must have been one of the early ones because now I'm at 366 million. A far cry from from any sort of recognition. Uh, Hipster Pop Geek is at 164 million. And then our friends over at Dem Fancy are still hanging strong at zero. Got to give them credit for being hanging consistent. strong. Hanging, hanging real strong down there. Um, so we don't have we don't have a whole lot of time here, but I, we we do want to wrap up with um, I guess we shouldn't call it a game because it's going to be a one player game. It's going to be a, a solitaire game played by our very own tactic. Um, our friend, our Patreon producer and friend Ben got back to us. Sir Ben, sorry, Sir Ben got back to us and said uh, that we should do some plane trivia. Plane as in P L A N E, not like not like plane like the Great Plains. Um, so I have a list of questions, or really just facts here in front of me that I'm going to try and get you to guess the answers to. Um, these facts are as of December of 2018, last year, so they're fairly current. But some of them are also not really like time sensitive. Like so, this first one, for example. Uh, when was the world's oldest airline established? Uh, and I should say it's it's KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. If that helps you, I, I doubt so- it would does are we talking like air balloon travel or is it all plane travel um you know it does not specify but i think for the purposes of of the game and based on some of the answers i would stick with planes okay i'm gonna say 1910 okay you're in the ballpark you're a little bit early they did not have planes in world war one but they were i think they were working on it did they have planes in world war one i thought Actually, they, they might they might have yeah i think I'm, i think i just said something totally wrong um, it's 1919, so uh, roaring, the Roaring 20s were really roaring with, with airlines. Um, I should also note that Qantas is the second oldest airline established in the 1920s, so they're right behind. They didn't even use quantum physics. 
or nor quantum entanglement um bastards let's do another one here uh in 1987 american airlines uh wanted to save some money and they did so by removing one olive a single olive from each salad that they served in first class how much money did they save on the year 1987 u.s dollars so make sure you adjust for inflation I want to say some ridiculous number because that's what it feels like. A billion dollars. I want. It's to. not a billion. Uh, I'm gonna say five hundred thousand dollars. Um, okay, it's a little high. A little high. Uh, at least you didn't crack into the millions. It was. It was only forty thousand dollars. So, really, just enough to like when you think about it, just enough to like pay a flight attendant salary. It doesn't seem like high enough number to be like used as a quiz yeah yeah it's like make it over at least over a hundred thousand i totally agree with you on that um but i still thought it was interesting and mostly because i don't like olives so take all the olives out of all the salads see how much money you'd save that way um okay at chicago o'hara's international airport uh an aircraft takes off or lands every blank seconds i'm gonna go with 30 seconds Okay, you're pretty. That's a pretty reasonable number. Thirty-seven. So, oh. I mean, I will say when you're at O'Hare, it feels like it's happening every five seconds. Well, you gotta you gotta wait for the plane to taxi away, and then you gotta wait for the air turbulence from the plane taking off to dissipate. So the, thirty yeah, the, seconds feels right. The downwash, right? Yeah. Um, okay, uh, got a couple more here. Um, the Airbus A380, which I believe it, it's like one of the largest aircrafts in the world, it has a wingspan that's longer than the aircraft itself. What is that wingspan? And I'm, I'm sorry to say that it's in, the answer is in meters because this is an Australian website. Can you convert it to feet? Um. Well, give me a second. I will. You know uh, what? I'm just going to guess a, a ballpark number. Let's do 50 meters. No, 100, 100 meters. 100 meters. Um, well, you were closer with 100 than you were with 50, uh, so that's good. Uh, it was 80 meters. It is 80 meters, I should say. The length is 72.7 meters, so as they oh. said, longer so than what's the aircraft that in itself. Feet? Uh, two, 80 meters is 260, f- rounding up, 263 feet. Oh, that's totally what I, what I would have guessed if I had feet. <laughs> if you had the right units. Uh, fair enough. Um, okay, let's do, let's do two more. Um... First of all, when was online check-in introduced, and by what airline was it introduced? Okay, so online check-in, which means internet. I'm going to say 2000. You're pre- yeah, you're 1999. So they were, they oh, were just on. trying to... Well, they were just trying to get ahead of Y2K, you know? Um, any guess on the airline? This is kind of hard. It's not like Southwest. JetBlue. That's a pretty good guess. JetBlue seems fairly forward-thinking. It was Alaska Airlines. I've never which, heard of Alaska Airlines. As I understand, I've never flown Alaska Airlines. As I understand it, they are like you, typically the top-rated airline, like every year. I don't, I don't know. They must be great for some reason. Um, okay, let's do one more. This one's a bit of a thinker. Uh, the seven forty-seven family of aircraft has flown more than... Well, okay. Um, uh, They've flown a certain number of people. Uh, That's equivalent to what percent of the world's population? So there's a few steps to this one. You have to figure out what the world's population is, and you have to figure out how many people the 747 family has flown, and then convert it to percent. So what percent of the world did you say is internet again? Uh, 47. So 47%. Not have has internet, internet. Use, use the internet. Uses internet. Yeah. And then let's just, let's assume they use internet to book flights. And let's also assume that... <laughs> pretty big assumption, but okay. Just, just chill. Let's also assume that this number includes duplicate flyers. So let's go with 80%. You got it exactly right. 80%. No, no shit. Wow. How did you do that? I just it's multiplied five, 40 by 2. 5.6 billion people equivalent to 80% of the world's population. But like you, like you said, when you think about it, there's probably like business guys that are like 
at least 20% of that just alone. There's probably like 100 guys that give you 20% because they fly like t- a billion times a year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I do have some more here, um, I, but I, we're running out of time. So I will just tell you that uh, at any given hour, there are over 61,000 people airborne over the U.S. Um, That's crazy. Business class was invented in 1979. And um, in... Uh, Let's see. I'm trying to figure out what this one even means. Singapore Airlines spends approximately seven hundred million dollars a year on food. Which, like, what, what food are they serving? Yeah, it's some good ass food. Um, and sixteen million dollars on wine. So they're skipping it's okay on the wine. wine. Yeah, it's like barefoot or like two buck chuck or something. Um. So yeah, that does it uh, for the plane trivia. Um, more commercial aviation trivia but still in the same in the same ballpark um so we've we've hit our hour here and um for that reason we'll let you go and and thank you all for listening and next week we'll be back at full strength farewell